Hi, it's Stephen Rosell, Technical Specialist with Autodesk, and I'm going to talk about a couple of related uh, tools today. One is a tool that was added in 2011 and then updated in 2012 called the Namespace Editor. And another is a related tool that is part of the bonus tool package under Windows is called Pattern Rename. Now, both of these tools actually are, are very similar uh, and used for similar purposes, but they actually uh, deal with two kind of different problems, two related but different problems. So first off, we'll talk about the namespace editor. So for those of you that don't know what namespaces are, they're basically groups or categories of objects uh, that allow you to have multiple objects with the same name. So oftentimes they're associated with referencing or importing of objects. So you can create them yourself, but oftentimes they get created for you. So for instance, if I were to go in and create a sphere, and we'll just keep this really simple. I'll save this out as its own file and we'll just call it MySphere. Now if I were to go to import, so I'll just create a new scene, I'll go over here and I'll import that, bring it into my scene, what you'll notice is that as it imports it automatically applies the name of the file to the beginning of the object. So I have MySphere colon sphere dot, or sphere one. So this is, this is what's known as a namespace. So if I were to import this same file again, say I import it more than once, now all of a sudden I'm going to get the same object, but I'm going to have two different namespaces. So you'll see that it's still called sphere one in both cases, right there, psphere one. Um, but you'll notice that each namespace is different. So I have my sphere and my sphere one. So this can get really kind of cumbersome. Um, if you're not intending to use these namespaces. So for instance, an example would be, let's say I have a bunch of spheres. So I'll just create a bunch of copies there. And I'll just create a bunch of copies this way. And now if you look in my outliner, then I just have a bunch of spheres. So I have sphere one all the way through sphere 42. Now if I save this file out, and we'll just overwrite that last file, my sphere. So when I import the same file, the one that I just saved into my scene, what you'll notice is that now I have a whole bunch of objects that all have a namespace using the name of the file. So I have my sphere colon sphere 29, my sphere colon sphere 30. So this can get really cumbersome. So if you're importing a bunch of files in order to assemble a scene, before you know it, you have all of these files with all these really long names. Now it even gets worse if I were to save the scene out one more time. So let's just overwrite that file again. So now I've actually saved it out twice over itself. So now let's go in and create this again. I'll just go in and do a file import. Now I've got my sphere, so I've just imported it twice basically. So now all of a sudden I've got a double namespace. So now instead of just having sphere one, I have my sphere colon my sphere colon sphere one. So this gets very uh, kind of tedious and cumbersome the more you do this. And this gets amplified as you as you continue to import objects, modify them, re-import them, and so on. So most people that have used Maya have come across this at one point or another. And so the, the simplest way of handling this is it's just part of the name, even though it's a namespace, it's actually just part of the name. I can actually just go in here and I can select everything before that colon, or rather the colon included. And now I can rename that object to just sphere one. And then I can go in here and I can do the same thing with the next object. But Obviously, if I've got 100 objects, I don't really want to do that with every object. The other thing to point out is that all of my textures, all of my lights, all of my nodes in general will all have this, this same uh, situation. So you'll look here, you'll see that in the channel box, I have the transform that is my spherical and my spherical, and, and then you have the shape node, which is my spherical and my spherical. And anything that's added to this object will have that same, uh, that same namespace. So long story short is there needs to be an easy way to go in and address this and to clean this up. And now there is. So that's where the namespace editor comes in. So in the past, in order to deal, this, you deal with this, you either had to do it manually, or you had to go in and you had to use mel, basically write scripts, or manually use mel to get rid of your namespaces. So if you go into the general editors here, under namespace editor, it will list all the namespaces in your scene. So you'll notice that I have my root namespace, which is the highest level, and then I have MySphere, and then another one parented under that called MySphere. 
So what I can do is go in and I can take everything within this namespace and I can list the contents of that namespace and that will show me everything that exists within the namespace. Or I can go in and I can do things like selecting all the objects within that namespace. So you can see that everything within my sphere has been selected. But what I really want to do in this case is just do something really simple like basically take everything in this namespace, select it, and then say move it to a new namespace. So I'll just take it to that new, new namespace and I'll just say add selected and now you'll notice look in the channel box everything that had those namespaces has been moved up to the higher level. So now I basically have these empty namespaces. These are actually doing nothing now. They're still in my scene technically but they're not actually doing anything. So one other thing I can do is I could say select all empty namespaces and then I can just delete those namespaces. And there we go. Now I'm back to where I started where I have a single namespace. So now all these objects have their original names back. So here's another example where I've just created a bunch of objects and imported them into my scene. You can see here I have my cubes, which are in the cube namespace, my spheres, which are in the sphere namespace, and my cylinders, which are in a sill namespace, and then torus, which is in the root namespace, which basically means they're, it's not in a namespace. Um, so you can also shift things around within namespaces. So for instance, I can come in here under my namespace editor, and it'll list everything in my namespaces. I can grab my sphere namespace, and I can select the contents of that. That'll select all those spheres. And then I can actually move those to the cube namespace. So I'll grab cubes and I'll just say set the current and then I'll say add selected and now you'll see that all the spheres are now within the cube namespace or the cubes namespace. We can do the same thing with the cylinders. You come in here, select the contents and move those, add rather, and now cylinders are all within the cubes namespace. So if you have a bunch of namespaces that you're actually using for organizational purposes um, then you can easily shift things around within those namespaces. Now another thing that we can do is we can create namespaces just for just for your own reference here. Let's actually just uh, start over here and I'll just go into the namespace editor and right now you can see if I create an object, just create a sphere and I go into the channel box, it names it sphere. If I create another object, another sphere that is, now it names it sphere and just changes the number at the end. So Again, the advantage of namespaces is you can have objects with the same name in different namespaces. So what I could do here is I could go in here and create a new namespace and I'll just call this I'll just call this my namespace for lack of a better word. So now that becomes the current namespace. Anytime you see that green light, it means it's the current namespace. So if it actually let's just go ahead and create another one here. Let's create a new one and we'll just call this second namespace. There we go. So now whatever one that has the green light is the active one. So I could set that to be current or I could set that to be current. Once you create a namespace and it becomes the current namespace, now anytime I create an object, it will be created into that namespace. So now when I created that sphere, it got created into the second namespace. If I were to go in and make this one active, whoops, set that to be current and I'll just create a cube. That cube, as it gets created, gets added into my namespace. Same thing with a light, any node that I create. So if I create something like a light, that light gets added into my namespace. So that's true with any node in my, whether it's a texture, whether it's a uh, camera or a light or whatever it may be. So um, that pretty much wraps up the namespace part of the uh, discussion. Let's talk about uh, prefixes now. So as an alternative to namespaces, you can also create something that's called a prefix. So if I were to go in and actually let's just create a sphere here and we'll just leave it with a default name and I'll just save this out as uh, that original file that I created so I'll just save as my sphere and now I'll create a new scene and this time I'm going to import that file and when I import the file instead of using namespaces this is the import options here you can see that by default it's going to import using namespace and it's going to use the file name for the namespace. Now if I had an existing namespace I could use that, I don't. But you can check this off and if I turn off use namespaces then what it will do is it will basically use prefixes. So now it will resolve all nodes with the file name as a prefix. So if I import that file and now I take a look in the outliner what you'll see here is that instead of a colon separating my two names now I have an underscore. So I have my sphere underscore p sphere one. So if I were to do the same kind of an import twice, 
same idea, bring in that sphere, now I have my sphere underscore p sphere two. So now it's using prefixes instead of namespaces. If I were to do the cube example, if I import this cube, it's going to take the name of the file, my cube, and the name of the object and basically splice them together. So this also gets very complicated and uh, this can happen in different scenarios. So oftentimes when you're dealing with uh, different data translators like certain CAD translation tools will actually append a whole bunch of these prefixes onto your objects and in, in the same way that namespaces can get cluttered these can as well. So if I take this file right here and I were to uh, save this out Let's actually just save the scene as, we'll just call it my objects. Create a new file. Once again, I'll using that option, I'll just import my objects, and now all of a sudden I get additional prefixes added on. So now let's actually go in and create some copies of these. Let's just create maybe some copies here and some copies there. And all of a sudden, I've got all these objects with a bunch of prefixes on them. And then it can even get worse. So let's save this file out, overwrite my objects. So we'll just overwrite that same file called my objects. So now I've got a bunch of extra objects in there. So when I do the import, same idea as before. It's importing all those files and concatenating, or rather adding on a new prefix. So again, it's a similar concept to namespaces. However, the problem is it's not a namespace. So if I go under general editors here and I open up my namespace editor, I don't have any namespaces. So I cannot use this editor in order to clean this up. So I could manually go in and clean this up, but that gets to be very tedious. So what I can do instead is use this handy little bonus tool under Windows called Pattern Rename. And Pattern Rename allows us to essentially go in and create uh, some search patterns and replace patterns for the objects in our scene. So for instance, I noticed that my objects is repeated here several times. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can say my objects. I want to, every time I find my objects, I want to replace that with nothing. So I'll add that as an option here. Actually, uh, first of all, I need to load all the objects into this so I can actually see it. So there we go. I just first of all had to go in and load all the objects into this list right here. So these are the objects I'm going to be working on. So let's try that once again. So I'll do my objects. I'm going to replace that with nothing. So I'll add that. And now I'll do another one. Um, actually that should have been my objects. Let's do that one more time. Third time's the charm. My objects. I'll replace that with nothing. I'll add there we go, so now I found it. So now this is what it's going to end up looking like. So now I can also go in, it hasn't actually done it yet, it's just giving me a preview of what it's going to look like. So now I can go in and I can say my sphere, I want to replace that with nothing. Now you'll notice it's gotten rid of all the my spheres. Now I can go in here and I can say I want to replace my cube with nothing. And now all of a sudden I've got a bunch of objects with underscores. So now I have to figure out what I want to do with those underscores. So instead of underscores, one, two, three underscores. Now what I want to do is replace that with uh, maybe a specific prefix. So I'll just call this test So I'll add, uh, with an extra underscore. So I'll add that. So now this is what's going to happen to all those objects. So I'm going to go from this that you see on the left to this very simplified version over there here that you see on the right. So I'll just say rename. And now it applies all those. So if at a later date I just said, well, I really don't want the test prefix on any of these, I can just go in here and, and just remove all this stuff. And I'll just say I want to take test and I want to replace it with nothing. Let's actually refresh that. And actually I forgot the underscore too. I can just create a separate one for that. And now I'll rename. And now I have all the base names for my objects. So again, it's a very similar problem to the uh, namespace issue, but it's it's uh, a different way of approaching it and uh, kind of a complementary tool. So at any rate, um, I'm going to also post uh, another video that was done by Roland uh, Ryer, who's the guy that wrote this tool, that goes into a little bit more detail about how this works, but that should give you a general idea of how you can use it.